<clears throat> Welcome everyone uh, to the uh, webinar with RJ, our good friend uh, from Togo. Uh, he's going to go, uh, guide us through a little bit of uh, fundamental analysis using his amazing platform. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know if you've already signed up for it, but you should definitely. Uh, it's, it's a great tool and we're very happy to have you as uh, a partner on this one. And uh, I, I would uh, leave it here. And uh, thanks so much for joining. Well, thank you, thank you, Juan, and and you know, thank you everyone for 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 joining us today. You know, I think um, we certainly are are in the midst of a of a really interesting time in markets, um, both in terms of the macro backdrop, but also the the sort of fundamental backdrop of of a lot of companies. And we've seen, you know, a, a pretty big phase shift. You know, sort of speeding speeding up of things. I think all of us, you know, might expected to have happened over over the next a few years into into certainly a much more compressed time frame, whether it's e-learning or or anything else. But um, uh, I'll give you a bit of background on me. As as Juan mentioned, feel free to to sign up. I, I think he's distributed um, a, a way for you guys to sign up and and you know, have, happy to give everyone um, access to to the platform. Um, who's who's involved with P trading? You know, we're really excited for you guys to use it, and and hopefully it's a, it's a good resource for you. Um, you know, I think Juan Juan asked me to to focus on on some fundamental analysis within Toggle, and and you know, I think uh, to start just to just to give a bit of background on on Toggle itself, and then and then dive in a bit is you know at Toggle we we were a bunch of discretionary investors who were really frustrated um, by the tools available to to you know help us make sense of the world where is the data moving where is that data meaningful and and you know how has the data you know typically led asset prices in in some way shape or form and so um, all of the tools on toggles sort of grew out of real professional money management and and you know we approached it from the from the perspective of of you know as as we're investing how 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 do we want to be notified and, and, and sort of think of not only where there are interesting data changes, but where those data changes are actually meaningful. And so a rough way to think about our framework is, is we're looking at millions of time series every night. You look for interesting milestones, big up moves, down moves, moves through zero, new highs, new lows, all of these, you know, these sort of milestones as one would think of in data. Um, and then tie those to asset prices using a knowledge graph where, you know, especially thinking about fundamentals, something like McDonald's fundamentals and what analysts expect McDonald's to do, right, likely has impact on things like Yum Brands or Burger King or Wendy's, right, or, you know, other, other fast food restaurants. Um, similarly, like the fundamentals of an economy, uh, you know, what's the, the trade balance? What, you know, what, what are the interest rate differentials between um, two countries, right? Things like that are sort of fundamentally have impacts on fair values of, of currencies and, and things like that. And so um, what the system does is it, it's looking at this, this vast universe of data um, and, and distills down into, hey, you know, not only here's where there's an interesting interest rate differential between these two countries, but also where that interest rate differential has actually typically led to one currency appreciating versus another um, or something to that effect. And so um, hopefully that's a, a, a good little bit of a background. But you know, I think oftentimes we think about fundamentals as being, you know, purely sort of single stock or, or company based. And and you know, I want to make sure we we think about fundamentals in in the broadest sense, right? Whether it's you know, as as everyone was really excited for oil to go negative, and somehow you're getting paid, to, you're getting paid to store oil, um, right? That's that's actually sort of fundamentals of, of of the oil market. Understanding, you know, how much am I going to get paid for for owning this commodity over long periods of time, right? Similar to how um, owning a company over long periods of time, you're going to earn the dividend yield. Um, and and with all of these things, you're trying to get to to some sense of fair value. And then you look at you look at where you know the current prices are, um, 
And oftentimes there's a discrepancy between fair value or how you've modeled fair value or a Wall Street analyst has, has, um, has measured fair value and you know, where, where something's trading today. And then, and then you, know, you, you use some of that information um, to help you sort of understand, help you understand where asset prices might move from there. So um, with that, I'm going to share my screen. I'll show you a few ways to access some of the data underlying in, in Toggle. I'll walk through a few examples, um, and I'll also show you how within the analytics suite, you can start to probe some of this yourself. So without further ado, hopefully everyone can see my screen. And you know, for those of you, for those of you that, that have accounts, again, if you don't have one, please, please sign up. You come in, you have a news feed of, of everything Toggle has found on your behalf for the names that you care about. But you know, for this fundamental exercise, I, I really want to focus on, on how you can access um, specific analysis related to, to fundamentals and valuations and things like that. And so um, one of the easy ways is, is there are all of these different topic tags. So you can say, you know what, I'm interested in, in all different drivers or topics, positioning, momentum, geopolitics, seasonality, fundamentals. And so for things like this, right, focusing on fundamentals, we can click into fundamentals. First thing we're going to see is, is a number of articles the system has produced, some bearish, some bullish, um, on, on single stocks, commodities, you name it, um, where the fundamentals are pointing in, in one direction or another. Um, you'll see some of them are based off of, of you know, how strong is the analyst consensus, like this one for Kion Group. Um, some things are based off of specific metrics. Hey, analyst expectations for dividend per share growth are, is dropping in, in Ireland. 90% of the time this led to a fall in price, right? And so you know, I think one of, one of the interesting things that, that we do in our system is we're not just looking at, hey, you know, people are revising EPS upward. Um, you know, one of the things that, that we'll look at something like, we can go into, into to Luminex, is that not only is it saying, hey, analysts are revising their, their expectations. In this case, hey, there's strong consensus that Luminex fundamentals are improving. Um, what does that actually mean? Actually, what we're looking at is the, the uh, on balance, um, looking at all of the analysts that cover Luminex, um, how are they revising it? Is everyone revising upward? Is everyone revising downward? Are some revising upward and some revising downward? So looking at not the numbers themselves, but the distribution of analysts that are revising upward or downward um, as, as the unit of analysis. In this case, 100% of analysts that cover Luminex um, and, have, and have made revisions, all of them are revising upward. So EBITDA, sales and EPS, they're all being revised upward for Luminex right now. Um, and all of the analysts are revising upward, right? So, so everyone's in consensus that, hey, a lot of the fundamentals of this company are improving. Um, the, the, chart, the chart we see below shows, when has this happened before? Well, actually we saw, we saw you know, sort of post-financial crisis, people get really excited about Luminex and start to revise upward. Um, we saw it in, in 2011, 2013, um, most recently a, a couple of years ago. And so, it, you know, it's interesting because it's happened quite a number of times in the past where you've, where you've seen analysts all become very bullish on, on Luminex at the same time. Um, and using these, using these as, as the sampling set, um, interestingly, when analysts have gotten very bullish on Luminex, Actually, interestingly, it's a counter signal. So typically over a, over a two to three month horizon, um, sorry, three to, three to six month horizon, Luminex is actually down. Um, and so, you know, sort of funnily, and, and, and we actually often see this happen where analyst revisions um, are a little bit slower than often than the news itself, where people have, um, you know, because they have to publish research reports, it has to go through, it has to go through, um, compliance and, and any number of checks, that by the time analysts actually publish their, their newly revised numbers, um, sometimes you know, the, the, the big price movements have, have already happened. And in this case, 
you know, we saw Luminex already have a, a big swing down from 39 to, to sort of 32. Um, and actually, you know, the, the revisions we've had subsequent to that are, are typically an indicator that there's actually still downward, downward pressure for the stock to move further. Um, now, going back, you know, it's not, it's not always that these things are bearish, right? Certainly, um, we see some things that are bullish. In this case, Iromed, 94% of the time, 94% of the time you've had a bullish pattern when actually when, when you've seen certain metrics, metrics drop, in this case, sales forward growth. Um, but, you know, as, as I wanted to, as I mentioned at the beginning, you know, I think we often think about it in terms of, in terms of, of, of single stocks. Um, but really, you know, it's, it's, you can aggregate up to an index like we see for the Irish overall. Um, you know, we've had interesting patterns recently in um, MSCI China, which sort of serves as an interesting, serves as an interesting blue, serves as an interesting blueprint given you know how well they've contained the the coronavirus crisis and and how analysts have been changing their expectations and and what it might look like for us as we as we move forward. Um, right? And we can see, hey, this is most similar to 2008, 2009, and 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 2012. Um, and so, you know, it's 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 really interesting to sort of think about it. And what Toggle's doing is taking, you know, this broad set of people who have done a lot of the the, the core fundamental analysis, and actually distilled it not only into, hey, here's where the fundamental analysis is is changing, and how those expectations are changing, either of metrics themselves or of how the you know the broader milieu is thinking about is thinking about um, whether whether things are improved, conditions are improving or, or deteriorating for a name. Um, but Toggle actually takes it that next step to say, okay, when we've seen changes like this in the fundamental data before, um, how has price actually typically reacted? And it goes through all of the, you know, all of all of the sort of background of, of what that's looked like. Do you see a meaningful distribution shift? Um, each time you would have seen this, what what would you have predicted, and what actually came out of it, um, and and all of that. And so, you know, I think it's I think it's an interesting way to to tie together um, some of the the fundamentals, actually, to price action and 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 how they've typically how they've typically led things there. Um, I want to jump into to analytics for a moment, and. You know, one of the things here is is actually the analytics suite allows you to access all of the data that exists within within Toggle. And so, um, one of the things that that one of the things that that we often we often look at is is um, you know, in something like currencies, obviously you see seasonality, you see uh, any number of patterns, um, but we can we can think about the how rates and currencies because they're so intertwined can co-move and that can give you a sense of of you know what's the fair value in looking at the differential between and looking at the differential between um you know two different countries and 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 how those things move and so um you know we can we can pull up something like gbp usd we can search fair value um and you'll see, oh, premium to rate implied fair value. And so what this does is, is this function will look at, look at GBP, it'll look at USD, it'll look at how that currency pair has moved. It'll also look at the interest rate curves in the US and the UK, and it'll look at the, the, the regression of the movements between them. And it'll plot, hey, you know, when have you, when, uh, what's the residual of that regression? Where, where does it seem like things are dislocated? From what that fair value might be, and so um, you know we can we can very quickly and easily see. Oh, actually, you know, recently we we saw quite a bit of a dislocation. Um, when when have we seen other dislocations like that before? When we've had when we've had a level um, as high as we did, and um, and uh, you know and and when that we've we've come down from a high level. So saying, hey, you know. That residual seems to be seems to be um, coming back to towards fair value. Um, what you know what typically happens there, and then and then what actually typically happens in in the currency itself, um, and you know how does how does that revert? 
apologies, the internet in New York has not been has, has not been so 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 good so far. Um, um, you can also think about and and you know doing doing sort of similar analysis um, for single names. So you could you know everyone's had a, a, a big focus on on uh, on gold miners. You know, we can we can pull up something like, hey, you know, S and P gold miners. Obviously, this is the collection of is the collection of stocks. But one of the things that funda fundamentally matters for these stocks is obviously thinking about gold prices themselves. Um, or we could pull up, you know, Freeport um, as a as a as a big mining company and say, okay, you know, Freeport. We've seen we've obviously seen seen some upward pressure, but how have analyst expectations mattered for mattered for Freeport, right? Let's say, hey, you know what? I want to know, I want to know how forward PE expectations um, have typically mattered, right? We're at, we're at relatively high PEs, which is a valuation metric. Um, how has that typically mattered for for a name like Freeport? Actually, when we've when we've had these very high PEs, the the stock price has actually typically done really well, and we can see, you know, when has that happened before? 2016, 2007, 2008, um, and 1997. And, and the interesting part of, of, of all of those periods is actually these are periods when, coincidentally, gold had gold had you know really big moves. Um, you know, you think about some of the the underlying fundamentals of some of these markets, right? We can pull up gold futures, but we can also say, you know, oh, you know, in, in even going back going back to the feed. Right, it's it's looking, as I said, not only not only at, at company fundamentals, but some of the the fundamentals and, and sort of microstructure of 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 commodities um, or or what have you. And so, you know, uh, something underlying a lot of futures contracts is is how are people positioned, right? And and you know, we may not have a fundamental fair value for for gold, obviously, given. A lot of the monetary backdrop and 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 the possible inflationary measures as as people think of them, although some investors believe it to be highly deflationary with all of the the, the fiscal and uh, and monetary stimulus. Um, but you know, fundamentally underlying that is is how are people positioned? And and actually, people are very long very long gold right now. We can actually see. Positioning is is as high as it's really been since 2008 2009, um, 2012, and during the the sort of euro crisis, um, and then and then 2004 is when we had people as long as they are gold right now, and so that can help inform the mosaic of of how to think about, you know, fundamentally what's 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 happening in in a given asset price, or you know, thinking about those those gold miners. Whether it's Freeport, whether it's whether it's something else, right? Thinking about the company fundamentals is one thing. Dividend per share, EBITDA, sales, right? All of those things. Um, but you know, obviously, taking it taking a step deeper, what goes into those models and and those sort of fair value and, and fundamental models are an understanding of of what things like gold might do, what other metals might do that they, you know, that they may mine and, and, and you know, really getting down to the, the, the nitty gritty. And you can think about how, you know, each one of these pieces of information, hey, people are really gold, long gold right now. Typically that means gold, that, that means gold continues to rally. You're like, oh, great. Well, you know, that, that's a good piece of information for me to, to input into my fundamental picture of, of gold miners. Oh, hey, you know, gold miners, you know, if we, if we pull them up again, right? Oh, hey, you know, when we've seen a big rally in gold miners, similarly, typically, hey, that rally actually continues in, 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 in gold miners. Oh, if gold prices are really high and people haven't hedged, maybe they have you know, a, a much better chance of paying off their debt obligations and given interest rates are so low, they can refinance at lower rates, right? And, and all of these, all of these little pieces of information um, and, you know, sort of going back to all of the different topics that we have, uh, these help form your mosaic of, of, you know, how to think about uh, a stock, a currency, a commodity, whatever it might be, more from a bottom-up perspective of, of thinking about how all of these pieces you know, come together into in, into forming one single image that can help 
that can help drive your 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 unit of analysis. Obviously, you know fundamentals we think of as as one very specific thing, which is you know what what's the underlying financial picture for this company, but a lot of there are a lot of underlying assumptions in in creating that picture, and you know hopefully in in, in poking and prodding the world whether via analytics or or looking through um, any number of of these topics or just searching on um, you know just searching on a on a specific name like Freeport you know allow you to get a better sense of of where fundamentals are moving and where the pressures might be sort of upward or downward. Uh, hey. So I'd be I'd be happy to take I'd be happy to take questions. Um, I know I sort of ran through um, quite a quite a bit very very quickly. Um, I think you know one of the things I know we we have quite a few more attendees now than we did um, at the beginning. Juan and I were were discussing a bit the the overall state of the market, and I think you know an int really interesting perspective that that uh, someone gave to me the other day is they they sort of felt like people are completely discounting 2020 and, and everyone's moving straight to 2021. Um, and if you look at some of the underlying valuation metrics, how people are assuming things progress from here, it, it certainly feels like it because, you know, as we, as we continue to learn a bit more or, or really not get much more clarity and as things start to open up, it's been interesting to see how, um, markets have been relatively complacent to to quite a bit of bad news. Yeah, we were talking about it. Like, there's there's not a match of uh, the news that we're seeing in general, right? Like, what we what we see in the news every day, they are not good news right now. Uh, and and the markets have been going up uh, quite strongly. You know, like we we saw that the Standard Poor's is you know uh, one year um, from May 2019. We're already above that level. <laughs> uh, the the uh, Nasdaq is above like eight percent. You know that that's a little bit below. It's a Dow Jones. And thinking about 2019 is, there was nothing like this. You know, the markets were doing well, the economy was growing, steady uh, employment growth. The, the, the economy was as good, you know, uh, it was in very, very good shape. Uh, now seeing all this is like, what's, what's going on, you know? <laughs> so, what, what am I missing? <laughs> yeah. And uh, but it's pretty cool of your tool, um, and I love it. It's okay. You, you, one thing is to get the fundamentals, okay? That and um, fundamental analysis. We 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 talk about. Uh, I like to describe not a behavioral pattern on a chart, right? What's going on macroeconomically? What is going on within the company? What is going on with the company, right? So there's several ways to 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 interpret that. But that, what I love about Toggle is, okay, it, it's not you go through the next level. Once we've seen these fundamentals, what usually happens, and you put the example very clear of this, uh, everyone is uh, upgrading uh, this company, and then uh, well there might be a, a lack, you know, <laughs> of, of that. And uh, it's, uh, it's, we have, I, I think it's, 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 it's a very good insight. And uh, of course the ratings agencies, their, their, their lag is larger, right? I would say than the equity analysts. Uh, but but it's a pretty pretty interesting view, you know. I, I really love that that side of it. And uh, and yeah, I, I suppose that the, the system is learning every time, right? It is. Yeah, you know, I think I think a really interesting 
a really interesting way to think about what the system does is that it it memorializes information in a way where human knowledge is so or human memory is so fallible right some people who some people who have been trading markets for 30 years and they've seen you know they've seen IBM report earnings more than 100 times they sort of know intuitively oh they beat by 5 cents here's what's you know here's what the impulse function looks like for the stock 85% of the time it goes up or down or or you know apple moves in th sympathy and you know and and all of those things are sort of codified based off of what they remember but you know as we've learned from a lot of behavioral finance we have certainly recency bias um, you know, and a number of other biases where where really uh, Toggle's framework makes you confront all of the data as it's moving all the time, and and you know it 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 has a it has a perfect memory to a certain extent where you know it's 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 giving you all of those statistics, and even though you might have intuition and you might you 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 know we we don't want to take the agency away from humans in that people you know, we have investors who have been investing for longer than most of us have been alive. And, and, you know, they remember a lot of the context around some of these market movements and things like that. But what they really appreciate is, is the fact that it's, it's making them confront their biases all the time. And it's making sure that they don't misremember things that, that are just, you know, in the back of their mind. Oh, yes, I do remember that in 1987 that happened, but actually, 17 of the other 18 times it went the other way for some reason i just have this one day stuck in my mind right and and you know i think it's in it's an interesting framework to to help combat some of those biases that that we now know are you know really ingrained in in, in quite a bit of investing yeah i totally agree and uh yeah the short-term bias and uh, yeah. sort of survival bias and all these and then uh this this is you know i i've heard uh uh kasparov you know Gary kasparov uh you know he was playing with uh, uh ibm uh uh what was the name blue deep blue hmm? deep, deep blue, blue. Right? was that yeah and he mentions and and he was do, doing this conference and talking about the best combination is not a machine and not a human. It's a machine plus a human. That was uh, his conclusion on, on that side. That they, they actually bet, they beat um, this, this machine by being with a computer and a human. I, you know, I think a, 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 a good example recently is, a, is in a lot of the, um, computer vision work that's been happening in medicine where you know diagnosing diagnosing tumors things like that um let's say via you know, mri or x-ray and that man machine combination is is actually a really good one in this way because machines are very diligent but but it, and it, humans often miss things and so you know you you help avoid both type 1 and type 2 errors um in in terms of in terms of how um you know how how the two work together as opposed to just humans or just machines um on their own okay uh i see a question here yes so the question is is it correct to think that as long as you have many metrics and forecast you could minimize the risk of taking a decision um it's a it's a really interesting question. I think you know one of the reasons I describe it as as like pixels in an image, or you know you can think of it as tiles in a mosaic, or you know, whatever whatever you know a vivid description you like is is I think certainly you know the the more perspectives you can bring, the more perspectives you can bring and 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 collate into your investment thesis. I wouldn't say the the less risk you take necessarily but i think uh, you know that the opposite is is you can be much more confident in your um in your investment right if you just if you have one thing let's say technical analysis is is pointing that 
there might be downward pressures. But you know, you're much more likely to, to look at an indicator like that if actually the fundamental picture is, is, seems to be really bad for this company. The company's valuation is really extended. The macroeconomic picture is really bad and it's a cyclical company. And you're getting, and you're getting you know, a, a, a bearish technical indicator. You know, things like that can be, you know, for lack of a better term, the straw that broke the camel's back, right? The, these things are sort of additive and you can think about, you can think about it as, as, as more and more lenses point to something going in the same direction, right? You can, you can likely be much more confident about, about, okay, this is likely to unwind and, and this is likely the direction that, it, that it's going to go in. I mean, I think, you know, you, you certainly can never be harmed by having, by having as many perspectives as possible sort of distilled down into, you know, how, how does this, how does this help uh, me understand where, where things might move? Any other questions you might have uh, about any? Do you all have a uh, total? Yes, you have. Uh, <laughs> I think I think it's a great combination, you know. Like if you're using Toggle maybe, and you know how to use it, I think you might have better chances of winning the 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 the, the weekly challenge. I would say. Well, we we <laughs> certainly hope. I don't know if 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 uh, people are are using it and uh, and combining it on the on the on the challenge, which it's. Yes. Oh, we have actually we have actually been adding shorter horizons. So you may actually notice as you start to go through the as you start to go through the the patterns that will actually explicitly show one week and two weeks out now, um, as opposed to just showing you one month as the shortest as the shortest horizon. So may, maybe that helps. That's a tip for for everyone here. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you, Juan. I, I really appreciate your time and, and thank you all for, for, for joining us. Uh, it's great to have you here. Um, I'm going to post this uh, in Pip Trade and I'm going to send it to the Mexican Stock Exchange as well. I think it's a great topic uh, and uh, you guys are awesome. And uh, um, one last question. Uh, Fundamental to... analysis. Okay, how would you explain fundamental analysis to your nephew? I mean, I would say it's it's fundamental analysis is trying to understand what the fair value of something is, right? So, you know, if you let's say you go to a lemonade stand and someone says, "Oh, it's it's five dollars for this glass of lemonade." If you're if you're really thirsty and there's if there's nothing around, that might be that might be the fair value for it at, at that point. But if you know it's a if it's a rainy day, you don't need you don't need something else. And maybe it's maybe it's fifty cents. And so, you know, I, I would say um, I would say certainly it's it's you know it's it fundamental analysis is is the act of of trying to piece together a lot of a lot of base information to to come together of 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 what's the what's the fair value of of something okay very uh you know good and, and short description you know like <laughs> uh, uh i appreciate your time uh rj thank and you everyone Stay safe. Uh, you too. New York. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, Thanks. for joining. Uh, this this will be shared uh, tomorrow as well. Thanks.